This videograph was prepared on behalf of the bean industry by Professor Howard Schwartz and Research Associate Mark McMillan from the Department of Plant Pathology and Weed Science at Colorado State University. The video will review research results from university and industry programs. Objectives of this videograph are to diagnose bean rust, understand factors which influence disease development, and review timely and economical disease management strategies in relation to common production practices. Bean rust is caused by Euromyces appendiculatus and the pathogen only infects beans. The organism can be recovered from plant parts and spore stages such as uridiniospores and teleospores observed microscopically. The life cycle starts in the early spring as overwinter teleospores germinate to produce basidiospores which infect primary leaves and stems of volunteer beans. This infection produces circular yellow-brown pycnia on the upper surface of leaves. After cross-fertilization between pycnia, White acia develop on the lower surface of the infected volunteer bean seedling. Aceospores are then blown by wind to infect other leaves of volunteer beans and new crop beans and produce iridia which repeat the infection cycle throughout the season. Initial development of iridia appear within seven days after infection as small raised white pimples. These young uridia continue to enlarge and erupt from the leaf surface as small reddish-brown pustules or uridia within 10 to 12 days after initial infection. Each uridium contains thousands of spores. A yellow halo may develop around the uridium. An infected leaf may exhibit variously sized and aged uridia. Uridia can also develop on infected branches, stems, and pods. Severe infection causes premature yellowing, wilting, and death of leaves. Yield loss is proportional to the loss of active leaf area and moisture stress. Hundreds of uridia may develop on one or more leaves of each plant. Near the end of the season, the rust fungus produces the overwintering dark brown to black spore stage within telia. As plants mature, infected leaves and other plant parts remain in the field to provide the overwintering source to repeat the disease cycle the following season. The rust fungus survives on and within previous year's bean debris. Volunteer beans then provide the bridge between last year's debris and infection sources which can then threaten this year's bean crop. Lack of a crop rotation can contribute to this season's disease pressure. Continual cropping to beans can aggravate disease outbreaks. Bean varieties can differ in their reactions to rust and the different races which it produces. Some varieties are resistant, while others are more susceptible. Rust spores are spread between plants and fields by wind. Multiplication and infection are favored by low to moderate temperature and periods of high moisture during development of volunteer beans and later the new crop beans. Disease management strategies should consider the following factors. Reduce seed loss during harvest. Thorough incorporation of bean debris. and aggressive elimination of volunteer beans.
rotate with crops such as corn, small grains such as wheat, sunflowers, and vegetable crops. Avoid growing susceptible varieties. Plant certified seed during recommended planting periods. Avoid excessive and frequent irrigations that may extend leaf wetness intervals. Since the fungus can produce new cycles of infection every 10 to 12 days, multiple applications of a fungicide reduce but do not prevent infection and may be integrated with other practices in the late vegetative to early flowering period. Chemigation should use less than one quarter inch of water per acre to minimize runoff and dilution effects of the fungicide. Aerial application should use four to five gallons of water per acre. The Colorado State University program has developed the following five-stage model to monitor rust and the need for fungicides on susceptible varieties of beans. The first stage considers the severity of the previous year's epidemic of rust in the region. The second stage considers the susceptibility of bean varieties planted this year. The third stage considers moisture and temperature conditions that influence infection of volunteer beans by the overwintered spore stages of rust. The fourth stage considers moisture and temperature conditions that influence infection of new crop beans by spores blown from infected volunteer beans. The fifth stage considers the stage of new crop plant development when initial infection occurs. Infection before or during flowering is more serious than infection after the pod bump stage. In summary, follow a sound integrated pest management approach. Sanitation should incorporate last season's bean debris and pathogens and reduce this season's volunteer beans. Crop rotation should include beans only once every three or more years. Plant certified seed of the most resistant and adapted varieties available. Follow a moderate fertility program and timely irrigations as needed by the crop. Avoid excesses. When disease conditions threaten, use appropriate fungicides to reduce rust infection and maximize plant canopy development during flowering and pod development. This concludes the bean videograph on integrated pest management of rust of beans sponsored in part by ISK Biosciences and the Colorado State University Integrated Pest Management Program. Thank you for your attention and enjoy the other segments of this educational series.